What's going on everybody? My name is Hydrus and welcome back to some more My Hero Academia Ultra Impact and today I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on starting out your brand new account in My Hero Academia Ultra Impact as well as some do's and don'ts when stuff like training your characters, your memories, using your stamina and also farming things like your ability born materials and stuff like that. So the first thing that I want to go over is for stamina. You can use gems to replenish your stamina. However, if you're free to play or you're very conservative with your gems for summons and all that kind of stuff, do not spend your gems on your stamina refreshes. Now, there are plenty of ways to get stamina in the game freely. Obviously, one is waiting for it to refresh on its own. You get some in login. You get some daily through daily mi through daily missions and such, which you can see here that I've already collected some on my own right there. You can see I got 60 stamina right there for doing the single of the day. So you can get literally free stamina for doing your free daily single on a banner. And then also you get free stamina from stuff like your daily patrol. And then also right here in the hero base, you do get free stamina and stuff like that. So there are plenty of ways to get free stamina throughout the game. Now, the only time I would recommend using gems for stamina refreshes is something like right now. Right now in the game, there is this going on to where you get double drop rates and also double character XP. Now, the double character XP is all right, but the double drop rates is what, you know, you need to focus on. And if anything, I would recommend spending at least 30 gems on your stamina refresh because I believe you get three refreshes for 10 gems until it increases to 20. So at the very least, I would recommend using your 30 gems for three total refreshes on your stamina to then farm your mats because on double experience right now, farming materials for the ability board is one of the best things right now. And again, they only last a couple days, so you're not doing this like for a weeks on end, right? So you're not wasting a ton of gems. But for ability boards, it is quite a heavy resource to then fill out a total of nine pages for UR and SRs. And I believe it's uh, seven or so or six or something like that for Rs. So, you know, farming up all these materials and stuff like that, it takes quite a lot of resources, as you can see, to do all this. And you're going to need a lot of stamina or a lot of patience to then fill out a lot of these ability boards over time. And again, when double drop rates occur, this is the time when you need to be farming these types of things. And also, that's the time when you're going to be wanting to then refresh your stamina with gems more often. Now, if you're a whale, you're going to be doing this anyway, and it really doesn't matter to you or really doesn't apply to you. But if you're still a whale, the double drop rates is the time to go ham, like go, 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 go. Grind up all these materials for your characters for the ability boards. You're going to need them. And I'll, they take a lot per each character, right? It's it's quite a bit of material. So again, double drop rates is something to focus on if you're wanting to do stamina refreshes. Outside of the double drop rates, again, up to you if you want to. But my recommendation, at least for free to plays and even light spenders, do not spend your gems on stamina refreshes, at least right now, until we get some more stages. You know, maybe we'll get material stages in the future, I assume. Again, the game is still a little under a month old. So again, we still have a lot of time to progress and get more stuff as the game goes on. So that's uh, that's one thing to consider with stamina. We get free stamina throughout the game, so you really shouldn't have to worry about it too much. And also, again, don't spend gems unless it's double drop rates. That's the thing to consider right there. And also another thing is when you're training your characters, the stages that you're going to want to do are these stages, this character training item stage. There's seven levels. Again, when you're starting out, you know, you're going to want to focus on these and you're going to get these training items over time. Now, this these stages really aren't that hard. Now, if we go to stage seven, right, I've already done mine for the day and it doesn't cost normal stamina. It, it just gives you two, three times per day or you can actually buy a shop item. You can buy like the extension pass to get six total tries per day for up to a week and you can keep repurchasing that but the seventh stage as you see the recommended uh you know power level up here as it shows is 135,000, and that really isn't what it is this is a super super easy level you really don't necessarily need 135,000. you could probably go in there with like 120 115 and still be all right like i was taking this stage on i think even though i was below the power le like recommended level so again you don't necessarily need that recommendation it's still good to have but this stage is fairly easy enough that you probably don't actually need it and again once you get to stage seven you're going to get a plethora of training items for even three times per day now what you're going to want to do with these training items and also this applies to the memory stage it's the same thing it's pretty easy stage and then also the gold as you see i have five million gold right now i you know haven't used my gold too much except for shop refreshes and also some ability board panels do cost gold but again gold is going to be kind of you know an easy resource to gather over time but yeah 
when you're doing memory farming and stuff like that for the training items these you're going to want to do and get up to that seventh stage rather quickly and then you're just going to skip ticket through it and that's going to be easy peasy now the way you're going to want to utilize your training items not only for characters but also memories is that when you go to characters the way I started out and the way I kind of figured this in the beta as well as when the game started, you don't want to you don't want to spread your training items across multiple characters. Now, it is good to focus on a specific team. Now, if you kind of look at what I am and one of my teams here, let's kind of go look at one of mine. As you can see, uh, where's my actual team? There we go. So as you can see, I have a mono blue team. This was one of the kind of the first you know teams that I focused on, except it was Momo, Bakugo and Dobby and I think Ochako and another UR stuff and like that. But the one thing to consider is focus on one specific team starting out and then hyper focus a specific character for training. So you want to train one character, get it at least up to a decent level. I would say at least max it out to level 80, which unless you're doing the ability board, which ability board is see my character is level 90. But again, the max level, if you're not touching the ability board, is level 80. At least get try to get that character maxed out first and then move on to the next one. And because characters are going to level up over time, especially if you're doing story and events. So you're going to, you know, gradually gain levels on the other characters. But if you have a power, like a powerful character like Bakugo, for instance, or Air Force Deku, that's going to be a character you just want to focus on. Get that damage output rolling as quickly as possible. That way you can just breeze through a lot of the story and stuff like that. And then also that way you can get more training items, more on and more stuff like that, right? So again, my recommendation, at least personally, the way I found the best way to do it is hyper focus on a specific team. And then also, instead of mixing your training items amongst all your characters, you know, at first I thought, hey, I'll just equally kind of divide my training items between all my characters, you know, have them around the same level and they'll gradually keep going up and up and up together. But I found that was more tedious than not, because as you go up in the training stage, you're going to get a lot more training items and then you can use a lot more on a specific character. So again, my recommendation, as you can see, I have a lot of, you know, leveled up characters and stuff and, you know, perfect. I'm going to actually do one right now. That's ability board, not training. <laughs> Let's go to training instead. And as you see, yeah, it's like I said, I have training items. And also when you're finished training a character, when they do max out their level, they don't show up in the training area again or the training menu unless you limit break them. But as you see, I have a plethora of training items right now, still kind of farming up and stuff like that over time. And also double drop rates are a thing for the training item stages. So they also do get dro double drop rates. That's the time you want to focus on getting that training item stage, grinding it up so you can get to level seven and get the maximum amount of training items when the double drop rate does hit. So as you see, I have a lot of training items and then me specifically, the way I found the best way is just dump a lot of training items into one character, max out their, at least their base level first. And then you can focus on that stuff later on and get a lot of your you know main characters leveled up as quickly as possible so for me i'm gonna go ahead i'm just gonna level up toga because why not toga let's just max her out with that max her out with that if i can hit the button there we go and you see i'm gonna have a quite a few of the big ones left over if i hit okay and obviously i'm wasting my smaller training items and that's perfectly fine but you know the big big ones these one right here these ones are the ones that you definitely want to keep around and can serve a lot more of now i would again i would recommend using the small ones then the medium ones first and then use your gold ones last don't just hammer all the gold ones into one specific character right off the bat you want to use the small ones medium ones and then the large ones that way you kind of conserve the larger ones so if you have something like i just did where i have a lot more gold left over then i can then use those on another specific character just max him out boom 68 does not take that many boom i just maxed out another character and i used less gold items again so there we go got endeavor leveled up and let's see, who do I want to go for next? I can go for the Todoroki. We can go for Kirogiri. We can go for Jiro. Uh, let's let's go for the Ochako. I'll go for the yellow Ochako here. Boom. Max that one out. Look at that. I'm maxing out characters. Boom. Leveled up there. And now I'm a little shy. It took about 68-ish roughly to max out a character with the golds. So I'm a little short on that one, but that's okay. And uh, we'll continue onwards with that. Again, same thing for your memories. You're going to want to focus a lot on your memories and then focus on the main memories that you're using. Again, Memory ones, you're going to get a little bit more memory items when you're doing those stages than you would the training items. So, again, my recommendation is boom. 
Oh, that's gonna max it out anyway. I don't even have to use anymore. Look at that. See, I don't even have to use those the medium and large ones for that. Look at that. Maxed. There we go. And again, as you're getting memories, you're gonna get ones that do actually, you know, you're gonna limit break them. Their levels are gonna go higher and higher and higher. So the more memory, you know, you're the ones that you want to focus on are the ones for your team. As you can see, I have a lot of memories that aren't max leveled at all. There are a lot of them are limit broken, but a lot aren't max level because I'm focusing on the specific ones that I use in game already. That way I'm not you know spreading my you know like my training items amongst thousands or hundreds of different memories not thousands but hundreds of different memories and that way i can kind of focus and hyper focus on specific ones that utilize the best for my team because you know if i'm building a team and i'm you know training up all these memory items and then oh i find a memory that's perfect for this character but then i don't have the right amount of training items to level it up well then that's a problem and i'm like well okay i can't level it up cool now what do i do i have to wait till i get more training items so again Focus on the training items, focus on the characters in the team that you're actually going to want to use for the longevity, at least for a lot of the story and main uh, and the main stuff like that. So let's just, I'm going to go ahead and train this one up. Why not with you guys? Boom, level 80. Look, I'm not even using the gold ones yet. Boom. Another UR memory maxed out right there. So again, hyper focus on one. Level up, level up, level up, level up, hyper focus on the ones that you're using currently. And you can tell which ones are on your characters. As you can see, they have that little blue text banner across the side on the bottom left. So those are the ones that are currently on my character. So I can go ahead and just focus on that. Boom, level up. Yes, max out. There we go. And then I'm done. That way I know exactly what memories to focus on by that little blue text banner right there. So that's some of the tips and tricks. Again, for, for beginners out there, VE Tower and USJ. Don't worry about beating those right off the bat. USJ and VE Tower are probably some of the hardest. Now, VE Tower is probably a little bit easier, but in terms of VE Tower, it takes a lot more time because you're going to need three specific teams to take on VE Tower. So I've covered this already, but again, VE Tower is kind of like end end game. You're going to want to focus on building three specific teams for the VE Tower bosses. And then USJ obviously is centric around specific type characters and specific character type teams to beat the USJ boss. So again, you're going to want to focus on, you know, your type teams and specific teams to utilize for that and stuff like that. So again, hyper focus on one team at a time, do what you can initially. And then over time, you'll then start to build up another team and another team and another team. And then you'll start gathering more and more resources and have a plenty left over after all, after all said and done, right? You know, game is new resources such as ability boards and then also training items and stuff like that is not going to be easy to obtain right off the bat you know it takes time to then grind to then build up these resources on your account so don't worry if you're not having a lot of it right away so and then you know after about a month or a year not actually about a few months down the line not even one month a few months down the line maybe six months to a year you're going to find yourself having a lot of these items just kind of bulk stored up, ready to go for the next character. And you're not going to have to worry about it too much. Again, this is just the this way the all gotchas work when they start out. You're not going to have all the resources. I've been playing Dokkan for years. And again, when I started out, I didn't have anything. Now I have plenty, 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 plenty of resources to go and stuff like that. So, you know, it does take time. And again, hyper focus on those specific characters, memories, teams, and you're going to be good to go. Again, don't use gems on stamina except for the two times drop rates that's going to be when you're best going to utilize your gems for the stamina refreshes other than that don't do that uh, again you have plenty of ways to get free stamina otherwise and yeah that's pretty much all there is currently right now that you would want to do in the game also when you have free events like this all might event do these events these events are really really good for items specifically and also for free characters as well you can you know get all those but do the items do these free events like this one right here you're going to want to do them and have a lot of free items and again, it's going to be good for you free to play players. So that's pretty much all my tips and tricks, guys. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down in the comments down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Click that bell, turn on all notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day.